for two more minutes because yeah, let's sure. see if there's some more participants we can get or five Hello, more minutes sure. we can start at 11:05 actually sure sure okay. take your time yes yes so in meantime i can also introduce other faculty member uh, magesh kumar dr magesh kumar rao is there yes sir yeah. so he works on uh, computational stuff so he is our computational guy in our uh, department and he studies uh, whatever organic reaction so he is our supporting boss oh wow uh, so that will be a great help for you as well right <laughs> yes 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 and nice we have uh, yes 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 and and we have dr parth saradi so parth saradi maram so he is our uh, uh, another faculty uh, and he he works on uh, batteries Solid state chemistry or materials chemistry. chemistry. Yes, Partha, you can also talk, you can say this. Why <laughs> you have to speak? <laughs> yeah. So it's nice meeting you. Uh, nice meeting you. Yeah. So uh, I always think like Partha Saradi is a single word. <laughs> no, it's a two, two names actually. I don't know why okay. people used to give two names to people earlier. <laughs> no, uh, if you look at the meaning of Partha Saradi, it is a single word, right? Yeah, it's a single Partha word. Partha Saradi. yeah but if you split them they they too have a different meaning they have uh, but uh, not at all related right, to the original meaning right yeah and so now, we have a colleague in ipc uh, uh, professor partha saradi mukherji mm -hmm. uh, so actually his name uh, partha saradi is a single word but in school record they did a mistake Uh, it's a uh, depend on uh, where uh, which uh, region you are from. You know, Bengali is different than the uh, Tamil. Yeah, he's from Bengal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, many people think uh, my name is like uh, I'm from Tamil Nadu or something. <laughs> Mostly, oh. or uh, you know, people think otherwise. I'm from Bengali. Yeah. Atta Saradi is a typical first name in Bengal, right? I have. Yeah. Uh, yes. Artha Yeah, but yes, uh, you yes. are right. There are Partha Saradi. Yeah, uh, we uh, Manada knows better. So we have Partha Saradi Gandhiban in IIT, uh, Tirupati. Then another Partha Saradi. So in Chen group, there are at least two Partha Saradis, right? Uh, Manada. <laughs> yes, yes. One is in IIT, the Tirupati. Yeah, yeah. Another one is in University of Madras. University of Madras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I know both of them through Jagan Mohan. So. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. He is now. He is also still in our contact, and he is uh, also in our uh, BOS member. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, BOS member, sorry, DC member. DC, okay. And Raju Pandian is there. Raju Pandian, you can ask him. Good morning. Good morning. Nice Good meeting you through this uh, platform. So when he said uh, you were in uh, Taiwan, so I wish to meet you. I was in uh, Taichung. Taichung. Yes. Okay. Chongqing University. Uh, okay, uh -huh. I was in Taipei, but uh, mostly people see uh, or mostly people saw me in Xinju. Uh -huh. <laughs> Because uh, yes. every weekend I used to travel to Xinju. Okay. Because, uh, I Xinju work on. Very, very, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good community. Very good Indian community. Uh, I, I'm sure Manadan, you may be remembering our uh, Diwali celebration, right? Yes, 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 yes. I used to visit uh, Sinchu for uh, Diwali celebration. Sometimes uh, Sinika. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 2007 Diwali was, uh, I would say, excellent. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Another is a good dancer. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I explored it today. <laughs> and uh, we did a performance together. I went to Sinchu and uh, he trained us. Then we did a performance for Diwali. In okay. yeah. <laughs> Those are all golden days and golden days. <laughs> yeah, we can always cherish those memories. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let me introduce another one, another faculty member, Nimai Mishra, Dr. Nimai. Uh, namaskar. Hello. Hello, Prof. Baiju. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my area is working in the materials, nanomaterials, perovskites, and colloidal quantum dots. So we are very happy to have you. Actually, when Manathan uh, send out this email, there will be our next uh, department lecture, you know, giving. And I look through your profile. You have been so good, doing so great. Uh, yeah. So uh, people like you are the now Indian in you know, a face of Indian science. Uh, so being so good, uh, like there are many people of... are doing really good. Ah, that's right. That's right. Actually, Indian science in you know in actually in our field. 
we have been very frequently publishing Angu Jack sitting here. That was not there 10 years back. That's, you are one of those. Uh, great going, great going. Uh, so, and the next to you, I think uh, Jain CSR, Kanishko Biswas, Kanishko Da is there. Tremendous public science, right? So yeah, 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 Kanishko, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of you together in Bangalore and then uh, and some ICERs are doing so good. So that's very yeah. happy. Happy things going on. Yeah. Thank, so, you. thank you, Dr. Nimai. So we will start huh? now at least. So good morning to everyone. So I am uh, Dr. S. Manadhan. I'm head of the Department of Chemistry. So I welcome you all for this department, Chemistry Department Distinguished Lecture Series. So the department, uh, chemistry department lecture series is a platform actually to transfer knowledge. It's, the transferring knowledge is never happens only with uh, uh, research scholars or faculty members within our university. So we are also making it abroad. It's a open forum. Anyone can come and participate. They can enrich their knowledge. Okay, they also can see what kind of research is going on and what kind of uh, uh, collaboration that you can make with uh, the faculty members or research scholars among yourself. More importantly, this also bring you uh, another future of what kind of research actually is going in India. And uh, through these forums, we are really happy to invite the eminent faculty members. So last series was ha actually happened uh, in the month of August 2020. And now this is the second edition. The first lecture actually of this edition came from uh, Professor A. Arunan, once again uh, from IAC Bangalore, from the Inorganic Division. And uh, now the second lecture is going to happen. And we have our uh, speaker, uh, Professor Biju. He is from Organic Chemistry Division, once again from IAC Bangalore. So we are really happy to have him. So before going into the, before inviting our uh, speaker, let me give a brief, brief introduction about our department. So our department currently uh, have uh, six faculty members. We are going to have one more faculty member also. Ramanujan Fellow will be joining in the month of October. And uh, we have started our uh, institution in 2017. At the same time, we have also started our department. So currently, we have uh, uh, 10 PhD students. So parallelly, we have started our research also. We have 10 PhD students it's on. And our faculty members are working on uh, different uh, research areas, like they have mentioned in material science, functional nanomaterials, computational, batteries, solid state, electrochemistry, as well as an organic synthesis. And um, we have also started our uh, BSc honors program, in fact, in our department. So MSc we will start in near future. So in the BSc honors program, we have students now joining. And in a couple of weeks, this time master also, uh, we are going to uh, get some students and the admission closes in a couple of weeks also. So BSc Honours is also simultaneously going on and whatever the BSc Honours we, pre we are offering is a research-based curriculum. We gave a special focus on research where uh, two semesters uh, where we are uh, particularly offering for uh, the research pro problems and how they are going to you know, go for the higher education and our using our new educational policy also, our university coming with a four years program, which is a highly research incentive based curriculum. So these, these, with these things, now I invite uh, Dr. Magesh Kumar Rawa to give a brief introduction about our speaker. Yeah, thank you, Manadan. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor A.T. Biju. Professor Biju has obtained his PhD from CSIR NIST under the guidance of Dr. Vijay Noyer. Then he did his first postdoctoral fellowship at the National Taiwan University. And then he moved to University of Monster as a Alexander Humboldt Fellow. He has begun his independent career at CSAR National Chemical Lab, Pune. In 2019, he has moved to IIC Bangalore as an associate professor. His research focus on the development of transition metal CC and C heteroatom bond forming reactions using arrain chemistry and N heterocycle car carbene organocatalysis. So these uh, catalysts will be useful for 
uh, different applications in organic synthesis. With this short introduction, I, I welcome Professor A.T. Biju. Uh, I kindly request him to start his lecture. Okay, so can you hear me? Yes, yes, you are audible, sir. So good morning to all of you. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mahesh Kumar Rawa for the very kind uh, introduction. And at the outset, uh, I would like to thank uh, my good friend Manathan for the kind uh, invitation to be a part of uh, uh, the distinguished uh, lecture at SRM AP, SRM University, Andhra Pradesh campus. So uh, thank you very much, Manathan, once again for uh, inviting me or uh, considering me for this uh, uh, prestigious lecture. So yeah, today I will be talking uh, to you about uh, one phase of our research, uh, which is mainly focusing on uh, catalysis, uh, specifically organocatalysis using uh, a very, very unconventional catalyst, uh, which is a uh, N-heterocyclic derived uh, carbenes. I will tell you on the way why it is unconventional and uh, uh, the importance of this area of catalysis. So we know that uh, catalysis is uh, one of the sustainable methods for forging carbon-carbon and carbon heteroatom bonds. And this could lead to the formation of a wide variety of uh, carbocyclic compounds, heterocyclic compounds, and also a series of acyclic molecules. And if we start with a chiral catalyst for a given transformation, one can also do a variety of inertial selective transformations. So in the vast realm of catalysis, we know that there are three typical methods. One is the enzyme-based catalysis, transition metal-based catalysis, and the third uh, important way to do catalysis is uh, using transition metal free conditions or using small organic molecules as catalyst for a given transformation. And this is known as organocatalysis. And there are multiple ways one can do organocatalysis. There are different types of catalysts useful for catalysis using carbenes or in general, small organic molecules. And among the various methods such as, such as secondary amine catalysis, thiourea catalysis, Bronsted acid, Bronsted base. There is a subclass where one can use carbenes and we all know that carbenes are really, really reactive species and carbenes for doing some organic transformations. So we know that carbenes are uh, specifically the species which are neutral, having a divalent carbon, that means having six valence electrons at the outermost shell of the carbon. And because of this presence of only six electrons, this is highly reactive and it is a very short-lived species because the ability of the carbenes will be always to complete the electronic object of this carbon. And if we look at the different types of carbenes, there are typically carbenes which are in singlet state and which are in triplet state. So if the carbene carbon is sp2 hybridized, where one of the sp2 hybrid orbital is uh, having a paired electron pair and the unhybridized p orbital occupying perpendicular to the plane of the sp2 hybrid orbitals, which is having a vacancy, this type of carbenes are singlet carbenes, which are having total net spin of zero and the multiplicity of one. On the other hand, there are carbenes where one can think about the electron transition from the S to the vacant P orbital and carbene mixes only the two SP orbitals to form sigma bonds with the neighboring carbon atoms and having the unhybridized P orbitals perpendicular to the plane, which leads to the triplet carbon. So in general, in many carbenes, we can see that the carbenes are neither sp2 hybrid or hybridized or sp. It is sometimes in between having a bent structure. And if you look at the carbene uh, involved reactions in organo, uh, organic chemistry, there are multiple reactions. So to name a few, I'm, I'm sure you are all aware of Freeman-Riemann reaction. 
the one of the best reactions of uh, uh, nucleophilic additions to carbonyls or nucleophilic addition uh, uh, reactions of phenols are the uh, where you can have uh, the dichlorocarbene generation from chloroform and potassium hydroxide, and then addition of uh, this carbene uh, from the ortho position of a deprotonated phenol takes place, resulting in the formation of salicylaldehyde, which is conventionally known as uh, the Reimer-Tiemann reaction, having wide application in converting phenols to salicylaldehyde. Moreover, one can also use this carbenoid species generated from SA diiodo uh, methane in presence of zinc. And this carbenoid species thus generated can insert into a carbon carbon double bond to form a cyclopropanation uh, type systems. So these are, uh, and we can also think about uh, uh, the reactions, the plus two level reactions such as carbylamine reactions. For instance, there are all proceeding via the carbene intermediate. So as I told you, carbenes are divalent species, highly reactive, short-lived species having an electronic sextet. So it is highly reactive. And the moment you think about carbenes, uh, we always think that carbenes are having electronic sextet. So carbenes are electrophilic in nature or electron deficient. A typical examples are dichlorocarbene, the key intermediate in Reimer-Tiemann reaction, or the dicarboethoxy carbene, where this carbene center is electrophilic in nature. On the other hand, there are a class of carbenes which are nucleophilic in nature. So as I told, typically carbenes are electrophilic in nature. But on the other hand, there are a species of carbenes which are Although having an electronic sex state, these carbenes are nucleophilic in nature. Why nucleophilic? Because of the presence of heteroatoms such as oxygen, sulfur, or nitrogen, by virtue of the mesomeric effect of this heteroatom, this can pull the electron density towards the carbene carbon, thus making the carbene carbon more nucleophilic for effective addition to an electrophile. A typical example is a, a dimethoxy carbene. When this type of carbene carbon forms the part of a ring, such as an imidazole derived system or thiazole derived system, or even a triazole derived system, where you have the heteroatoms as nitrogen or nitrogen and sulfur, or even both nitrogens. So by virtue of the mesomeric effect of this heteroatom, this carbene carbon is now very much nucleophilic and it can add to a variety of electrophiles. So the catalysis using this type of catalytically active species, which are known as carbenes or nucleophilic heterocyclic carbenes is one of the important area of catalysis nowadays. And in most of the catalytic applications using carbenes, this catalytically active species is generated in situ in solution by using or starting from the corresponding imidazolium salt or thiazolium salt or even the triazolium salt. So once we start with an azolium salt with this nitronium or uh, cationic nitrogen, the CH proton is highly acidic. So in presence of a mild base, the base can abstract this proton and this proton can be shifted and the nitrogen will be neutral now leading to the formation of this carbon. And as you know, these carbenes are one of the best ligands for a wide variety of transition metals. For instance, the Grubbs first, uh, second generation or the Hoveda Grubbs type systems. But in organocatalytic applications, unlike the remarkable use as ligands in transition metal catalysis. In organocatalysis, this catalytically active species is generated in situ and it adds to electrophile to initiate a given reaction. So if you look at the structure of a carbene, the mesomeric effect by virtue of the mesomeric effect of this nitrogen this can pull the electron uh, this can push the electron density towards the carbene carbon 
but at the same time the electron negativity of this nitrogen or the minus i effect of the nitrogen can uh, pull the electron density so this push pull effect will make this carbene carbon more stable for sufficient or having sufficient lifetime in uh, catalytic reactions on the other hand one has one can have the sterically demanding groups on these two nitrogen atoms so that this carbene two carbenes cannot come closer and react together to form a dimerization so if you have a nitrogen nitrogen so two carbenes can come closer and it can dimerize to form the dimer of a carbene and this once this dimerization is happening it is an irreversible reaction so the carbene activity will be gone so to prevent the dimerization one can fix sterically demanding group on this nitrogen atom so that two molecules of carbene will not come closer and dimerize and thus uh, destroy the catalytic activity of the species so now we move to the reactivity of carbenes uh, i in the beginning i told you that carbenes are really useful for doing unconventional modes of reactions so typically if you look at aldehydes or ketones specifically an aldehyde we know that the aldehyde carbon is electrophilic in nature and uh, because this whenever a nucleophile add to this aldehyde this carbon oxygen bond will be polarized towards oxygen converting this flat molecule to a tetrahedral intermediate so this is a conventional reactivity of aldehydes however one can also do a reverse reactivity of aldehyde by converting the inherent electrophilic carbon nature to a nucleophilic nature by adding a 1,3 dithiol. This is a standard chemistry of uh, E.J. Corre and Sibak. What happens is if you take an aldehyde and we know that aldehyde is inherently electrophilic, we can add a 1,3 dithiol and then the second uh, thiol can cyclize to form a dithiene intermediate. And this dithiene intermediate, the CH proton can be abstracted by a strong base, making it a nucleophilic species. And this nucleophile can add to an alkyl halide, displacing the bromide to form a product with a, uh, in such a way that if you look at the product and the aldehyde, the aldehyde carbon just behave as a nucleophile via treatment with a dithiol by converting into a dithiene. And this remarkable feature of the polarity reversal. So the reversal of inherent polarity from the nucleo electrophilic nature to the nucleophilic nature is something which is known as the term umpolon or the reversal of normal mode of reactivity. So one can use carbene for this type of unconventional polarity reversal strategies. How? If you think about the addition of carbene to an aldehyde, and we know that the aldehyde is inherently electrophilic in nature, and this will obviously convert this flat molecule to a three-dimensional intermediate. And now this tetrahedral intermediate can abstract or undergo a proton transfer, resulting into the formation of, again, a flat molecule, which is just an enaminol intermediate, which is otherwise known as Brislow intermediate because this was first demonstrated by Professor Ronald Brislow from Columbia University. And if you look at this aldehyde, which is inherently electrophilic at this carbon, which the polarity has been converted to the inherent electrophilic system to a nucleophilic nature by the addition of these carbenes. So carbenes are useful for the polarity reversal or umpolon reaction. And this is why carbenes are useful for unconventional mode of reactions. And once this umpolon or acyl anion is generated, so it is essentially a formal abstraction of a proton, but it is not a base mediated abstraction of proton. 
So the carbene adds, we generate a tetrahedral intermediate, it undergoes proton transfer and to form this intermediate. And now this intermediate is an enamine type system where the center is nucleophilic. So once the acyl anion is generated, this can add to the same aldehyde or a different aldehyde to form a new carbon-carbon bond, constructing a wide variety of alpha hydroxy ketones, which is known as the benzoin condensation, or it could add to a wide variety of Michael acceptors to construct a series of 1,4 diketones, which is known as a stator type reaction. And this, the majority of this carbene catalyzed reaction, as I told you, this is the fundamental, uh, fundamental mode of reactivity of carbenes in organ catalysis the ability of this catalytically active species to reverse the normal mode of reactivity. And this type of reactivity, again, this is inspired by nature because this type of systems, this reactivity was uh, first demonstrated uh, in uh, biological systems as early as uh, 1958, Brislow found that uh, the coenzyme thiamine, uh, coenzyme thiamine which is useful for the decarboxylative, non-oxidative non decarboxylation of keto acids, as well as the formation of uh, acyloins. And he found that the activity of this catalytically active species is mainly because of the thiazole present in this system, which essentially forms the catalytically active carbene under basic medium, which forms this Brislow type intermediate. That is one of the important mode of reactivity of carbene, which is inspired by biological systems, but also the other side of carbene reactivity where there is no polarity reversal happening. This is also inspired by biological systems. For instance, Townsend and Kovacs demonstrated a biomimetic strategy for the synthesis of this uh, cloulenic acid using a thiamine derived uh, phosphate, uh, having a thiazole, which is a catalytically active species as demonstrated in the previous slide. And this can add to a glyceraldehyde derivative and a elimination of a molecule of water could result in the formation of a carbene bound asolium intermediate, which can eliminate this phosphate in biological systems to generate an alpha, beta, and saturated acyl asolium intermediate. And to this, L-arginine and amino acids can undergo a 1,4 addition, and a series of steps could result in the uh, bio bio uh, bio biochemical synthesis of clavulinic acid. So uh, on one hand, the ompolum reactivity of carbene, which is inspired by biological systems, and on the other hand, the non component transformation. So here the carbene adds to this aldehyde, and now there is no polarity reversal happening here. In the case of previously, in the previous slide, it is a polarity reversal. So in the next 20, uh, 30 to uh, 35 minutes, I will be talking to you the work we have done in this area of catalysis using the umpolung strategy as well as the non umpolung strategy. And as I told you, the catalytically active intermediate will form a variety of Brislow intermediates, which was a just an elusive intermediate in 1958, originally proposed by Ronald Brislow, but now in uh, this um, active intermediate can be even crystallized uh, thanks to uh, Professor Bergkessel from University of Cologne. He demonstrated the way to, cat, uh, uh, to crystallize all the catalytic intermediates formed in carbene catalysis. So as I told you previously, the addition of carbene to aldehyde and subsequently to a Michael acceptor forming 1,4 diketone, which is known as the Stetter reaction. So the me mechanism of this reaction is the addition of ca carbene, which is generated from the asolium salt, specifically the thiosolium salt here, will form the Brislow intermediate. And now the Brislow intermediate can add to the Michael acceptor and a proton transfer could result in the formation of this product. So when we started working in this area of uh, organocatalysis uh, almost 10 years ago, the 
use of vinyl sulfones and vinyl phosphonates as electrophilic coupling partners for catalytically generated Brislow intermediates were not known. So we demonstrated a carbene catalyzed addition of aldehyde to a vinyl sulfone by making this carbene, uh, ca uh, this aldehyde electro converting the electrophilicity to nucleophilicity and then addition across the vinyl sulfone to form a variety of gamma keto sulfone. And we extended this strategy to gamma keto phosphonate using vinyl phosphonates as the Michael acceptors. And we know that this strategy of this tetra reaction, the addition of carbenes to aldehyde and the subsequent addition to Michael acceptors, which is known as the Stetter reaction. And this reaction can be utilized for a variety of cascade processes. This is already known in the literature. For instance, if we start with a thalaldehyde, orthothalaldehyde derivative, and add a wine acrylate in presence of carbene, what could happen is that the carbene can undergo a nucleophilic addition to one of the aldehyde moiety, thus generating a nucleophilic Brislow intermediate. And this generated Brislow intermediate can add to the Michael acceptor, the acrylate in this case, and the anion thus generated can add to the second aldehyde for a diastereoselective synthesis of this type of uh, uh, tetralone derivative. So this is something which is known by Ye and Cobalt case as early as 2010. So we envision that can we use this tetter aldol type strategy for the construction of CN bond containing axially chiral molecule because there are several drugs and biologically important molecules having this axially chiral CN bonds. So the idea was to use the orthothalaldehyde and use this carbon-carbon double bond, which is electron deficient for doing a stator aldol cascade. And in that process, if we use a sterically hinted melimide for this process, we can have control of the resulting chiral center to form an axially chiral molecule. And here, uh, as a result of the stator aldol reaction, so it could form this alcohol with having two uh, point chiral center and the CN axial chirality. And we thought that if we can oxidize this in situ under the reaction condition to destroy these two point chirality, because if we oxidize this moiety to the ketone, this carb chiral carbon will be symmetrical now. So the molecule only contains the axially chiral molecule. So this was the idea, which was realized recently by Salman Barik in our lab. The treatment of orthothalaldehyde with an N tertiary butyl malamide using the chiral N heterocyclic carbene derived from this amino indonol source and oxidizing the reaction mixture using PDC afforded this product, the spirocyclic product with the CN axial chiral molecule. And we found that this reaction was working reasonably well with a wide variety of malamide derivatives. And in all the cases, as you can see, the products were formed in reasonable yield and enantial selectivity. And the reaction works fine with a, a series of uh, disubstituted and uh, a nitro or ido substituted functional group and a series of uh, orthothalaldehyde derivatives, uh, which are symmetrical in nature, which leads to the formation of uh, the CN axial chiral, mo chiral molecule in good yield and high enantial selectivity values. So possibly we believe that the carbene catalyzed reaction proceeds via the generation of free carbene, and this free carbene can add to one of the aldehyde generating the tetrahedral intermediate, which undergoes a proton transfer to form the Brislow intermediate. And now the Brislow intermediate can add to, to the electrophilic carbon-carbon double bond of the melimide to form this adduct. And this can undergo a proton transfer to form this type of intermediate, which can undergo an intramolecular aldol reaction, which forms this uh, compound and this can easily further oxidize to the product. We also believe that this intramolecular aldol reaction can take place via 
the initial carbene elimination to form this intermediate. And now this intermediate can cyclize where the stereochemistry of the aldol product is controlled by the initially generated C and axially current bond. So this was a puzzle whether the carbene was involved in the aldol reaction or it is not involved. So naturally, I seek the help of uh, an expert. Uh, we, luckily, we have a theoretician uh, expert with DFT calculation, Garima Jindal in our department. So she did some calculation and found that the this intermediate uh, is better stabilized by 5.4 kilocal per mole, which is formed via the initial carbene elimination and then the aldol reaction. Whereas the transition state leading to the intermediate before the aldol containing the carbene is a high energy transition state. Nevertheless, uh, we believe that this reaction proceeds via the initial carbene elimination, then aldol reaction to form this intermediate. This was further oxidized under the reaction conditions using PCC to form the product. So this was very exciting uh, because this is one of the rare examples where one can use carbenes for the construction of axial chiral C and bond forming reactions. And as I told you, the carbenes, the, one of the important application of carbenes, are, it is remarkable ability to reverse the polarity of aldehydes to form Breslau intermediate. And if we extend this chemistry to alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, one can think of the extended Breslau intermediate or homo enolate equivalent intermediate. I'm not going to the details, but I would like to tell you that in the realm of organocatalysis using carbenes, these reactions are mostly limited to the polarity reversal of aldehydes, and not many reports are known beyond aldehyde involvement. And little bit is known about the Michael acceptor impolum, the polarity reversal of uh, act, um, um, uh, activated carbon-carbon double bond or electrophilic carbon-carbon double bond uh, pioneered by Fu and co-workers. So what happened is that if you take this Michael acceptor alpha beta unsaturated ester, we know that the beta position is inherently electrophilic in nature, okay? So once we add a carbene to this beta position, we can reverse the no polarity of this beta carbon from the inherent electrophilic nature to a nucleophilic nature, thus partial negative charge will be generated. And now this can displace this bromine to form the exocyclic cyclopentene derivative. And this chemistry was extended into an intermolecular version uh, independently by Matsuoka and Glorius lab, where a tail-to-tail -tail dimerization of methacrylates were observed via a carbon carbon bond forming reaction. So again, this is via the polarity reversal. And it is envisioned that these reactions proceed via the deoxy analog of Breslau intermediate. So in the case of aldehyde, it was a Breslau intermediate. So we few years ago, we envisioned, can we use this strategy for the polarity reversal of an aldimine? because we know that imines are also a very good class of electrophilic species in organic synthesis. So what we did was we envisioned a aldimine, which is formed from an aromatic aldehyde and a amine having a Michael acceptor tether, a simple condensation reaction. And the idea was to add the carbene to this imine and we know that this imine carbon is inherently electrophilic in nature. So we envision that using carbene catalysis, we can reverse the normal mode of the CN double bond and making this carbon nucleophilic and add this across this Michael acceptor. And if successful, this could result in the formation of two, three disubstituted indole derivative. And possibly this reaction proceeds via the ASA analog of Breslau intermediate. So remember, in the case of aldehyde, it is a simple Breslau intermediate. And in the case of a Michael acceptor, it is the deoxy Breslau because there is no oxygen. And in the case of imine, we believe that this is the ASA analog of the Breslau intermediate, which is playing a role. So inspired by this strategy, 
my student Atanu Patra, he did the optimization studies for a simple aldimine derived from benzaldehyde and an ortho aminostyrene derivative. And after a series of trials, Atanu found that using an N phenyl triazolium salt as a carbene precursor and potassium terbutoxide as the base for the generation of a carbene, the desired 2 3 di substituted indole derivatives were formed in moderate to good yield. The parent substrate afforded almost 82% yield of the product. And as you can see, the reaction was tolerated by a broad range of functional groups and even the heteroaromatic systems and vinyl systems. And in all the cases, the products were formed in moderate to good yield. So this was very exciting because this is the first time carbenes were used as a catalytically active species to reverse the polarity of an imine or aldimine specifically. So we propose the mechanism of this reaction, which proceeds via the addition of a carbene to an imine, thus making a tetrahedral intermediate. And now the tetrahedral intermediate can undergo a proton transfer to form the assa Breslau intermediate. And at this stage, we also considered the addition of free carbene to the Michael acceptor moiety because this was known by Fu and Kovacels. And this could generate the deoxy Breslau intermediate. And this deoxy Breslau intermediate can possibly add to the imine and thus lead to the same product. However, our initial mechanistic studies, as well as the uh, theoretical calculations by uh, Rajesh Konadi, uh, sorry, not Rajesh, uh, Kumar Wanka from NCL Pune, we could found that this reaction in turn proceed via the assa Breslau intermediate and not the deoxy Breslau intermediate. And once this assa Breslau intermediate is generated, this could add to the Michael acceptor moiety and then a proton transfer could result in the formation of this desired product with the elimination of free carbon. So this was exciting because this is the first time carbenes are useful for polarity reversal of carb, uh, an imine. And this work, what we did experimentally was uh, independently demonstrated in by computational studies by Lin Su, Li Xiang, as well as uh, Professor Wei group in China. And this gave some sort of understanding that the proposal of imine impolum was uh, 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 validated by DFT calculations by two groups independently. So inspired by these results for the conversion of an amine or amine, then imine, and then to indole, we thought, can we utilize this strategy for the construction of a, a quinoline derivative? So the idea was to use this type of substrate to convert this into two for di-substituted quinoline derivative. Again, Aptanu Patra, a very talented PhD student, he worked on this and he was able to demonstrate a wide variety of uh, quinoline synthesis using the carbene catalyzed umpolum addition. So what happened is that the carbene will add to this imine, making this polarity reversal. Now this will be nucleophilic in nature and it adds to this carbon-carbon double bond with the elimination of one of the as fluoride and getting this difluoromethylated phenolin derivatives. So we also can use this strategy, this imine umpolum strategy for the reaction across a bis imine in an enantioselective selective fashion uh, demonstrated by Tamil Das. Uh, and these results afforded the chiral dihydroquinoxalin derivatives in up to 98% yield and 90 8% EE. These are just the selected examples for this reaction. So uh, I should confess that this reaction worked only with the salicylaldehyde derived imines because this, uh, we believe that this OH group has some role in stabilizing the in situ generated Breslau intermediate by hydrogen bonding interaction, as well as this, uh, this imine. Uh, itself will be stabilized by an intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So for the purification point of view, as well as the reactivity point of view, 
only this uh, hydroxyl substituted bisimines were offered in the product. So, so far I was telling you about the one phase of our research on umpolum transformation, the polarity reversal using carbene. Now I take you to a different phase of carbene reactivity where carbenes are also useful for doing transformation without the polarity reversal, or in other words, the non umpolum reactivity modes of carbene. And a typical reactive intermediate in this realm of catalysis is uh, the generation of alpha, beta, unsaturated acyl azolium intermediate. And this intermediate can be generated from a wide variety of acid fluoride. So if you have an acid fluoride, you can add this carbene and then fluoride elimination can lead to this intermediate. This can happen with a wide variety of carboxylic acid intermediate or uh, simple aldehyde enol. You generate the Breslow intermediate and oxidize the Breslow intermediate or one can use the oxidized enols for the transformation in the absence of an oxidant, in all the cases, this intermediate can be generated. So the reactivity of this intermediate is this we are, if you look at the intermediate, this alpha beta unsaturated acyl azolium, this is electrophilic at the carbonyl position as well as at the beta position. In other words, we can consider a wide variety of these nucleophiles addition to this carbon carbon double bond and carbon oxygen double bond to form cyclic compounds. So this was the underlying principle. And more importantly, if we use a chiral carbene for this transformation, one can have perfect control over the generated chiral center in the molecule. So this was the underlying principle behind the generation of alpha, beta, and saturated acyl azolium chemistry. And I should say that this chemistry is already known even before we started working in this area. As early as 2010, the Studer group demonstrated the dihydropyranone synthesis from the 1,3-diketone or acetyl acetone and its addition to alpha, beta, and saturated aldehyde using carbene and a Karash oxidant, an organic oxidant. However, at that time, there was no asymmetric version known, and this reaction is applicable to only oxygen heterocycles, and one has to use this stoichiometric oxidant. So having no information or no knowledge on asymmetric catalysis, we started working in the students on reaction in the beginning to demonstrate the inertial selective version of this reaction. And Shanti Vardhana Reddy, he's now a postdoc at the University of Texas. Uh, he found that this strategy, the originally proposed concept of Studer can not only use for the pyranone synthesis, but also for pyridinone synthesis by a, developing a unified strategy by using either 1,3-diketone or an enamide to form a unified strategy for the synthesis of dihydropyranones or pyridinones. This was exciting because the E of the product was up to 99%. With this single result, so the idea was we use 1,3-diketone or enamide as the base nucleophiles. So with this strategy, Shantivardhan developed a series of reactions. So he used an enolizable aldehyde or cyclic 1,3-diketones such as humarins or pyrazolone derivatives. And in all the cases, you can see this uh, expected six-member ring, pyranone or pyridinone derivatives were formed in very high enantioselectivity. selectivity. So we believe that this reaction proceeds via the generation of free carbene and the free carbene adds to the aldehyde, the bromoenal, generating the Breslow intermediate, which undergoes a rapid debromination to form the key alpha, beta, and saturated acyl azolium intermediate. And to this, the this nucleophile can add in a 1,4 fashion, generating a new carbon-carbon bond, and it can undergo a proton transfer and a subsequent nucleophilic acylation could result in the formation of the dihydropyranone product. So this will result in the elimination of the carbon. We also found that the addition of this bis nucleophilic species will take place from the bottom phase of this alpha beta unsaturated acyl azolium. So this is a, the nucleophile, bis nucleophile addition from the bottom phase when 
this group will go to the top and this is having an extra stabilization via a hydrogen bonding interaction, which is not possible if the nucleophile adds from the top phase where the phenyl is going down. So in that way, we could explain the observed inertial selectivity in the experimental result, which is validated by Kumar Vanga, my colleague from NCL Pune at that time. So initially these reactions were limited to uh, a series of 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. And then they, we envisioned, can we use the strategy for a benzylic SP3CH bond functionalization? So the idea was to use this type of substrate, a toluene derivative having an enone tether and an cinnamaldehyde derivative, which is a precursor for alpha beta unsaturated acylosolium. And uh, we believe that this reaction could take place in a cascade manner, where under basic condition, if you have the toluene derivative, the CH uh, proton can be abstracted. And this can add to the Michael acceptor by a, by a 1 4 fashion in a Michael addition manner to form a CC bond formation. And the enolate can add to this enone in a second Michael addition. And this O minus thus generated can undergo acylation to release the free carbon in a lactonization step. So this was the concept we proposed. And this was uh, realized by Subrado Mukherjee in our group in 2018. And he found that a wide variety of uh, enones can be coupled with alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes to construct this tricyclic delta electron derivatives in high diastereo selectivity and in ensure selectivity value. I should confess that this reaction proceeds only when we have strongly electron withdrawing group on this ring, which makes this methyl proton more acidic for the addition to alpha beta unsaturated acylosolium. So we thought, can we use this strategy from a Michael Michael electronization to an Asa Michael Michael electronization cascade? where we use a indole derivative, again, having an enone tether. The idea was instead of a simple Michael addition in the previous case, we envision a assa Michael addition to construct a CN bond, then the second Michael and the lactronization as described in the previous case. And this was again demonstrated by Subrado two years ago in our lab. As you can see, a variety of pyrolocinolene derivatives were synthesized in high enantioselectivity selectivity and diastereo selectivity. So with this result uh, on N benzylic SP3CH bond functionalization, uh, we envisioned, can we use this concept for an aromatic CH bond functionalization? So we came up with this idea, can we use a benzofuran or benzothiophene having an amino group at the three position and use this carbene catalyzed strategy for the functionalization at the C2 position to construct a chiral molecule. So the idea was using bromo inner at carbene to form the alpha beta unsaturated acylosolium and the hard center, hard nucleophilic center of this bromo amino benzofuran could add to the hard nucleophilic uh, electrophilic center in a one two addition generating an allyl alcohol derivative, which is poised for a 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement following an assa gleason version. And this can undergo a tautomerization and a further cyclization could result in the formation of a, a pyridinone derivative. And this can open under um, nucleophilic condition to form uh, this uh, benzofuran derivative uh, or benzothiophene derivative. So the idea is, using this NHTS as a directing group in a carbene catalyzed C2 functionalization of benzofuran, which was realized by Shilpa Barik in our group uh, last year. And she found that this reaction works in up to 94% and 96% in ensure selectivity. And she found that this reaction, as you can see, it tolerates a wide variety of uh, functional groups and the desired products were formed in very good yield and in ensure selectivity. So Manadan, can I take five more minutes? Yes, 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 no issue. Okay. Please go. Thank you, thank you. So with this result, uh, as, as you can see, we started with uh, one, three dicarbonyls, enamides, and now a CH functionalization 
uh, we thought what, what will be the outcome of the reaction if we have a 1,3 carbonyl and functionalized at the alpha position, now it is no longer a bis-nucleophilic system. So we came up with this substrate, a malonate, which is connected to a ketone using a one carbon tether. So the idea was to use this to, for the generation of a nucleophile under basic condition. And now the anion thus generated can add to the alpha beta unsaturated acyl solium, generating a carbene bound enolate intermediate. And this can undergo an intramolecular aldol reaction to form an alkoxide. And this alkoxide can undergo a beta lactonization to release the carbene to form a beta lactone. And under this reaction condition, possibly this can undergo a decarboxylation to form a cyclopentene derivative. So this was the idea which was realized by Shantikopal Mandel now. And as you can see, this reaction tolerates a wide variety of functional groups. And you can see in most of the cases, the reaction afforded a single enantiomer of the cyclopendine product. And this reaction was extended to a cyclic beta keto amide. And again, the idea was the beta keto amide, the, using the nucleophilicity at the alpha center, it can add to alpha beta unsaturated acyl solium. And this generate a carbene bound enolate intermediate. Uh, if you remember in the earlier case, it undergoes an intramolecular aldol reaction because it was a carbonyl tether. Now there is no carbonyl, so it undergoes a proton transfer to form this intermediate, a carbene bound asolium intermediate. And now this imine center can cyclize to form the pyroloquinolin derivatives. And this, uh, sorry, the spiroglutarimide derivative. And this was again demonstrated by Shandipo Bar Mandel in 2018. And as you can see, a variety of spirocyclic uh, uh, glutaramide derivatives were synthesized in reasonable diastereoselectivity up to uh, 16 is to 1 and reasonable inertial selectivity and yield. So, so far we told about the nucleophilic addition of this nucleophile. SP2CH functionalization, SP3 as well as uh, as well, and a alpha substituted malonate. Now we thought, can we extend this concept from a simple nucleophile to a wine analogous system? Or in other words, from an enolate to a dienolate. So the idea was we know that the a system such as a beta methyl chalcone or enone under basic condition could easily generate a dienolate intermediate, which is now nucleophilic from the alpha position or from the gamma position. This can be also formed under cyclic conditions. So what Shandivardhan already did was he came up with a pyrosolinone substrate, which under basic condition, we can see this can be abstracted, this proton can be abstracted, which can generate a dienolate intermediate. And the treatment of this system with aldehyde could result in the formation of this pyrocyclohexadienone derivative using carbene and the Karash type oxidant. After a series of optimization studies, Shantivardhan found that this product was formed in 84% yield and 98% enantioselectivity. selectivity. And with this result, uh, this the scope of this reaction was examined. A wide variety of enars are tolerated, as well as all the possible substitution on pyrosolinone were varied. And in all the cases, the spirocyclic, uh, spirocyclohexadienone derivatives were formed in moderate to good yield and excellent inertial selectivity. Mechanistically, this reaction is interesting because this reaction proceeds via the generation of alpha, beta, and saturated acyl sodium as usual. And at the same time, the pyrosolinone under basic condition generate the dienolate intermediate. And this adds to the asolium in a micro type fashion, a wine analogous micro addition, constructing a new carbon carbon bond. And under basic condition, a second dienolate can be generated from this proton. And the second dienolate. The possibilities are the dienolate can add to this car carbonyl via a four-membered ring, or the enolate can add in a six-membered ring. Obviously, the enolate addition will be more feasible 
which leads to the spirocyclic system, which gets oxidized to thermodynamically more stable spirocyclohexadiene derivatives in good yield and excellent in show selectivity. So motivated by this, uh, very recently, we also developed a strategy for the desymmetrization of uh, this 1,3 diketones using carbenes for the construction of uh, uh, the enantial selective synthesis of tricyclic beta lactones demonstrated by Cyan Shi and co uh, team in the lab. And as you can see, the reaction afforded product in high diastereo selectivity and very good enantial selectivity. And this is the mechanism of this reaction. So again, the alpha beta unsaturated acetyl sodium forms and the base abstract a proton from the alpha position of this nitro. And this uh, anion will add to the alpha beta unsaturated acetyl sodium forming a new carbon-carbon bond. The carbene bound enolate now can add to one of the ketones of this diketone forming a, a, a fused ring system, 6,5 fusion. And this alkoxide can undergo a beta lactonization to form the desired product with the regeneration of the carbon. So uh, in the last 20 minutes uh, or so, using the known umpolum strategy of carbene catalysis, using this simple carbene catalyzed reactive intermediate or the catalytically active intermediate alpha beta unsaturated acetyl sodium, we could generate a wide variety of heterocyclic compounds as well as the carbocyclic system and even tricyclic, tetracyclic, and spirocyclic system in very good yield using a single carbene bound intermediate use, using chiral carbene for enantial selective synthesis of various heterocyclic compounds as well as uh, carbocyclic systems. So, with the help of uh, leaders in the field of uh, NSC organocatalysis, uh, we have edited a book on carbene organocatalysis and heterocyclic carbenes in organocatalysis. And this book is available online in Amazon. And as you can see, most of the leaders in the area of uh, carbene organocatalysis has contributed a chapter. And this book is available online uh, in Amazon. I request all of you to uh, read this book uh, to get more insight into the carbene-based organocatalysis. We also just completed the uh, edition of a book on benzene chemistry. This is the second, another area of, uh, or another phase of our work. Maybe next time I will be talking to you about a uh, benzene story. And we have edited this, uh, the state of the art in the area of benzene chemistry with the support from uh, all the key leaders in this field supported by Wiley. This book is also online in Amazon uh, from last week, uh, more probably uh, two weeks uh, from now. Uh, so I also, again, request you to have a copy of this book uh, uh, to get more information about uh, uh, the Orion chemistry. So uh, yeah, this is an advertisement slide. So uh, we are also editing uh, manuscript being submitted to the Journal of Heterocyclic Chemistry and uh, the impact factor has been improved a lot now. So almost 40% uh, uh, improvement happened this year. So the impact, current impact factor is 2.2. And uh, if, if you feel that you have a very good work related to heterocyclic uh, synthesis or application, Feel free to write to me uh, if you are interested in writing a review or research article. Please feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, I, um, I, I hope that uh, we will be able to do uh, it in the best possible way. Yeah, so this is the most important slide for me. So all what I presented in the last 15 minutes, uh, uh, thanks to all these students, uh, the uh, students who completed and the students who are working now, uh, mostly I presented the work of uh, those who have uh, completed and also the work of uh, Argo Ghosh, Purva uh, Balarna, Shilpa Barik, uh, Sayan Shi. So I have shown photograph of many of them uh, when the work was uh, explained. Also this uh, carbene catalyzed reactions, uh, symmetric catalysis was uh, started by Shandivardhana Reddy and he's now a postdoc with Professor uh, Uttam Tambar in uh, University of uh, uh, Texas, uh, University of uh, Texas at Southwestern. And also the immune polum was demonstrated by Atanu Patra. He's a Humboldt fellow now. And uh, the current members, Arko Khosh, uh, he's a 
expert in uh, thiamine catalysis, asymmetric catalysis. Uh, he just uh, submitted the thesis last month and he's going to uh, Rice University for his postdoc uh, in a couple of months. And uh, I also presented the work of uh, Shilpa, Sain, uh, and uh, Subrado Mukherjee. He's already a postdoc uh, in uh, Raiken, uh, Japan. And another scene, uh, other students are mainly working on uh, uh, benzene chemistry. He's the senior most student, Rahul Gaker. So he just submitted, uh, gave the thesis colloquium last week, and he will be submitting the thesis in another two weeks. And uh, most likely, he will be moving to University of Regensburg for his postdoc soon. Yeah, uh, so this, this uh, uh, I'm very lucky to have this uh, hardworking of uh, motivated students to work in our lab. And none of, none of these are possi uh, possible without the financial support from all these funding agencies, starting from the startup grant of NCL, uh, CSIR support, uh, BRNS, Sefipra, uh, Alexander von Humboldt uh, uh, support in the form of a equipment grant and uh, the generous support from uh, CERB, uh, Department of Science and Technology. And uh, yeah, uh, once again, uh, thank you, Manadhan, for uh, the kind invitation uh, to deliver a talk as a, in the, as a distinguished lecture at uh, SRM uh, University in uh, uh, Antra. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you all. And uh, I uh, I'm, uh, thank you for, uh, once again for your uh, uh, kind attention. And I will be very happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Biju, for your uh, nice and excellent presentation. So you can call me Biju. <laughs> Biju. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was a nice presentation. So it's really, uh, uh, you know, these NHCs, I know that you are working on this field. And in fact, I also want to learn more about NHC. So it's very good that we had a, a time and you, in fact, are happy to accept our invitation. So now the session is open for question. And uh, the audience who are there, you can just uh, uh, raise your questions, raise your hand. I can also unmute you so that you can ask the question directly. So the uh, Vishnu Das, are you available? Just raise your hand. There's a question from Vishnu Das. OK. Yeah, uh, Vishnu Das, can you uh, unmute yourself? Okay, so he is not asking. So maybe I can ask. There is one question from audience. Like okay. in the first part, in the first part of presentation, the umplong of aldehyde using NHC. So he noticed that use of four and strong that MS in multiple reactions. So what purpose does it serve for the particular transformation? So uh, actually, these uh, many of the carbene reactions. Uh, these are very sensitive to moisture content in the reaction. So we believe that or we observe that in some of the cases if we add 10 uh, 4 angstrom molecular sieves it can probably absorb trace of the moisture in the solvent uh, in many cases uh, especially in the ether containing solvent if there is a very very trace of moisture present this can probably quench the carbene so possibly the molecular sieves can make this of uh, the solvent very much dry so we use this uh, before the reaction is initiated by the addition of a base or a carbene. We add molecular sieves and stir for a while to make sure that there is no absolutely no moisture present in the reaction medium. And then only the reaction will be initiated. Possibly the molecular sieves uh, will help in absorbing the trace moisture present in the medium. Yeah. Okay, so is that, shall I, shall I supplement? So is that a... Uh, uh, the reason that you guys go for like 20 mole percent, every time when I see like 20 mole percent of uh, organo catalyst, is there any specific reason that you go? Uh, it is no, uh, not specific. Uh, so what we do is uh, in most of our reactions, we start uh, the optimization studies with around 10 mole percentage of catalyst. And uh, then most of the times the student work with 10 mole percentage of the catalyst and optimize the enantiomer selectivity. And in majority of the case, the students will be facing problem with getting reactivity. So he may be getting maybe 40 to 50% yield and 
more than 90% e okay the e's are fine but the e's are not beyond a moderate level so then the immediate question student will do come to ask me is uh, can i increase the catalyst loading because then he knows that the yield will improve maintaining the reactivity so in most of the carbene catalyzed reaction or in general the organocatalytic reaction up to 20 mole percentage is standard compared to the transition metal catalyzed reaction i agree in transition metal catalysis people most may not use more than 10 mole percentage but in standard organocatalysis uh, we use up to 20 mole percentage yeah it is just to improve the reactivity yeah so thank you thank you and uh, uh, so now you use you know metal free nhc catalysis okay and then you did some variety of reaction. So is there some, is there all NHC can be suitable for some other catalyst because NHC can also use as a ligand for a metals. Yeah. So I, I also worked on that. So is there anywhere that the catalyst uh, can be used only for as an organic catalyst, not as a ligand? Do you, can you classify anything, something like that? So um, basically, uh, so that if you take the imidazolium, thiosolium or triosolium based catalyst, the imidazolium catalysts are having better nucleophilicity. Okay, uh, better nucleophilicity, so it can bind in a better way with the metals. Uh, so in general, uh, the imidazole derived catalysts are used as ligands for transition metals. Say for example, Grubbs 2, we have the imidazole derived catalyst. But when it comes to the uh, reactivity of carbenes, uh, what we observed was that the thiosol derived carbenes are best for car uh, simple stator type reactions. Because one reason could be in the thiosol, uh, in, if you compare the imidazole and thiosol, in the imidazole you have the two nitrogen substituent, you mostly have bulky groups. But in the case of thiosol, one side is sulfur and the other side is the nitrogen, and nitrogen is substituted. So this nucleophilicity in terms of sterics, so the carbene can really go and add to the aldehyde in a better way than a sterically demanding imidazole derived carbenes. So that is one reason generally people use the thiosol derived carbenes for normal um, uh, reactions like benzoin and stator reactions. On the other hand, if you use in a, if you want to do enantio selective transformation, in most of the case, we need to have uh, say for example, this is the structure in majority of the case, the amino indenol derived carbene. So the thing is that this amino uh, this amino indenol substrate is commercially available. So it is relatively easy for constructing this triosolium salt and Further, it, it is very reactive also, okay? And one is the accessibility of this ligand. So if you have the nitrogen substituent, the preparation will be easy because you can easily use this, uh, um, the mesetyl hydrazine part to couple with the, the amino indenol and prepare the carbene precursor. And this carbene is something like a benchmark. Uh, this is demonstrated by Jeffrey Bode from ETH Sewerage. Uh, which is having exceptional reactivity. Uh, so yeah, so it is all depending upon the type of reactivity one plants uh, one wants to use. Uh, it, 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 it determines the outcome of these reactions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir uh, Biju. Good afternoon, dear guest, uh, Dr. A to A T Biju, sir, my fellow colleagues and participants from uh, SRM University and other various institutes. It's my great pleasure to deliver this uh, vote of thanks for this event. On behalf of Department of Chemistry and SRM University, uh, I would like to thank our chief guest for the wonderful talk. We believe your discussion on this uh, particular topic, organocatalysis using in heterocyclic carbenes would have created enormous interest among young students and researchers in India. Though I am an analytical chemist, today I obtained some knowledge on organocatalysis area 
Also, a special, special thanks to you for sharing the book and uh, review articles. I think interested researchers and uh, students would, I should say, they should make use of it. I would like to thank our beloved president by encouraging this kind of department and university lectures, which can make huge impact among ex scientists. I would like to extend my warm gratitude towards our VC, Professor V.S. Rausa and Pro-VC, Professor Narayana Rausa for their continuous support in both research and academic activities like this. I extend my heartfelt thanks to our ITKM department for their extensive support in advertisement and also technical support during this department lecture series. My sincere thanks to all the participants. Thank you for being with us. Without your presence, this lecture will not be complete. For your information, we recorded this lecture and it will be available on YouTube so that you can share it with your colleagues or students who are interested in this research field. We, the Department of Chemistry at SRMAP, regularly organize this kind of lectures from eminent scientists throughout the year. So stay tuned. See you all in the next event. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prajapandian. And now I request uh, Samuel. Samuel, uh, you can uh, stop the telecast. Okay, thank you very okay. much, Manavan, once again. Uh, thank you, thank you, Biju. Uh, thank you so much. So, if uh, I think, in, in fact, if you are okay, then maybe we can also have some uh, small interaction if my faculty members are interested, or otherwise, we will uh, get in touch with you. Okay, so we are also growing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, uh, yeah. So ultimately, that is why we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, so we will also, uh, our faculty members also will be in touch with you. So in sure, a very sure. need, then uh, you can uh, do the needful also for us. Sure, sure, sure. My pleasure always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful talk. Yes. Wonderful talk. Really. Thank you very so much. vivid. I think if students who have ever been working in NHC, they should see those things in YouTube. You know, it's wonderful talk. Okay. First, the, the way you introduce, you introduce the basic, the way you, you introduce yes. your uh, area of research, it was well okay. connected and really nice. Really, really. It's very yes, nice. Yes, yes. yes. He, uh, I, I have seen Biju, like, you know, carrying paper, research paper, you know, where, whenever he goes, he comes from the Taipei to Jinji, he carries some poor research paper in his bag. <laughs> so we used to tease him with this. Huh? So our uh, common friend, uh, oh, good friend, is Kishore oh, Mohan. Eh? So he yeah. used to tell that you just open the bag, you will see some poor research paper in his uh, bag. So that, that kind of dedication that he has, you know, and that's how he reaches now and in the level and the kind of publication you are having. Yes. Uh, tells you that the quality of research that you are doing. Yes, yes. So really, we are very happy to see you and, uh, you know, have your presentation. And so, learn uh, from you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, any of our faculty members that have any questions related, or do you need to discuss with him? Okay. Then, if not, then uh, uh, he is free to reach. I think. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Feel free. Feel free, feel free that, to contact yeah, me. Yeah, he is free to reach. You can also call him through his, uh, you know, through landline when he is available. He picks up. Okay. And I called also first time when he was in IAC. He picks up. So, when whatever helps required. I think he will be doing for us. So thank you so much, uh, Biju, for. Uh, I think it is. Uh, it is also very important that we need to help each other. Yes, because, yes. Uh, this is also one uh, one area. So uh, we in our country, we the so science will develop Lack. if we support each other. Yes, yes. In terms of funding, in in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, friendship. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> Road, road. We are doing all these things for, uh, yeah, we enjoy doing uh, practicing science. So, but in, in this, we need to have a cooperative mind. That's the most important thing. So, yes. please let me know if I can be of any help to.
sure sure, sure. sure. Thank, thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank, thank you, you, thank so, you much. so much see you then thank you very much nice meeting you all be, uh, once the yes. open the situation becomes normal okay we are have we always welcome you to visit our university huh? yeah sure then sure. we can have some direct interaction also yeah i will sure. be able to share the other face of our work men science chemistry uh, yes sure so sure. so yes thank you thank you so much yeah. okay thank you, thank you. Bye. Good. Yeah, nice Bye. meeting you all. Uh, take care and stay safe. Yes. Thank yeah, you. same to you. Thank same to you. you. Same to you. See you. Hello, sir. Shall I? Ah, I'm in Mumbai, sir. Shall I?